What's the difference between a switch loop and a three-way switch? Is there a two-way switch? So this was sent in to me. This was a comment on a YouTube video on the Switch Loops video. Um, he said, this is from Daniel P. I would love to install new light switches that I can control through my phone. A Switch Loop is where you can control a light switch from two separate switches, question mark. I love to control a hallway light that I could turn on in my bedroom and turn off in my living room uh, because I have no hallway light and it's dark between the two bedroom hallways. So uh, there's a lot of different ways that you could get multiple switching set up for a specific load. There are apps where you could like sit in bed and just like touch an app and it's hooked up to your Wi-Fi and you know, you get wiring devices throughout the house and things are controlled um, and you just do it with your device. There's other things that like if you are in a room and say you've got a switch and you want another switch over there, but there's no way to get wire over there after the fact, you can have uh, wireless switches and wireless dimmers. There's a few different brands that make them. Legrand has a brand, uh, Lutron has a brand, the Picos. There's a couple of different people that offer this, but it's essentially just a switch that doesn't have any wire on the back of it. It's just flat and you can screw it right to the wall, put a plate over it and it looks like a switch and it talks wirelessly to another switch that you have to replace your normal switch for. Um, so they're able to talk to each other and that's one way to accomplish a three-way switch. A switch loop is something entirely different. So let me break into it a little bit visually so you can see what's going on. All right, so the difference between a three-way and a switch loop, they're both something as an apprentice that you kind of can't wrap your head around because you have to think about the flow of current. You can't just go like pull some wire, hook th some things up and not have to think about it. So they're like weird things that you wire a little bit differently. I remember like illegal or dead end three ways were another one where it's like, whoa, I'm wiring this in a really bizarre manner. Um, but there is such a thing called a three way switch loop, which I'll get into that here in a second too. But just basically so you understand, say we have two switches at the ends of a room. Uh, with a three-way, a typical three-way, you need to have a hot side and you need to have a leg side. So we'll just call this our hot and we'll call this our leg. Now leg means switch leg. So that's always the, the one wire that you've got going up to a light. That one wire from a switch is always called your switch leg. That's why we call this the leg side. It doesn't have an incoming hot coming into it from a panel or from some other plug. There's ways to wire things if that is something that you have. We won't get into that. You should watch the three ways, three ways can be video if you're interested to see like alternative and illegal three ways. But leg side does not have an incoming hot. All it has are two travelers that go over to this one and it has a leg, switch leg that goes up to our light. Our hot side is different. Our hot side does not have a leg, switch leg that goes up to the light. It has the incoming hot and neutral. So this is our hot side. So how a three-way switch works is we have, first off, we have our incoming power. So we've got an incoming hot that's coming in. We always hook that up to the black screw, just like on the leg side, the wire that goes up to the, the light source is going to be on the black screw. So notice we've got gold screws in between. Those are your travelers. And then the weird ones, the hot or the leg, are always gonna be on your black, uh, your black terminal. So on this side, you would have your leg and that goes up to this light. This is just to represent like what you would actually see out in the field. I'm not like wiring anything into it. So you can pretty much just ignore that. I'm gonna do the black, white, and green on this because this is the light symbol. So your black would go to that. You'd also have in this box somewhere, you would have a neutral that's going to that. And out of that box somewhere, you're gonna have a green that goes to that. So just uh, so that you know, our leg side, everything goes up to the light. In coming here, we've got our hot, we already said, we've got our ground, we've already said, and we've got a white that's not hooked up to anything, it's just in the box. So what we have to do is in order for this white to make it up to the light, we have to run something in between them. So we run what's called a traveler and we usually run this with 12.3, which is a black, red and a white inside of a single piece of Romex. So our white will get connected to this white. Our black will get connected to one of the travelers. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna do this little hop over thing so that we know that it's not actually touching any of those wires. Um, same thing for red, our other traveler is gonna go straight across and hook to the other switch. So you've got traveler screw to traveler screw, traveler screw to traveler screw, and then you've got your black screw on your leg side that goes up to the light 
and then you've got your black on the incoming side on your hot side that's hooked to this device. So internal inside of this thing, there's a, this is the, called a common because it has something in common regardless which way, uh, which, which path it's taking. When you flip the switch in one position, that flapper goes down, allows current to go through. There's another one on this side. So it, in one state, it'll allow it to go through but say you came over and flipped the switch, now it's gonna connect on this side instead of down here. So it's gonna make sure that current can't flow. So that's how you get the light to go off. And then if you flipped it back, it would allow current. Same thing on this side, if you switch this flapper, now there's an open circuit and it won't let it travel. But that's how you wire a three-way switch, right? We have our hot can go all the way through the circuit, can get up to the leg, can come back on our neutral, go back all the way out to the source back here where the black and white are actually connected out of the transformer. So it allows for a complete circuit. So just remember, hot side, leg side, two travelers in between, neutral has to make it all the way up to the light from the beginning all the way through. So that's a standard three-way. A switch loop's a little bit different kind of a thing. A switch loop, instead of running our hot into the switch like we normally do with most dwellings nowadays, most buildings that we, that we do anything with, we run a hot into each one of the device boxes. Back uh, many years ago, say like 60s, 70s kind of time frame, a little bit in the 80s too, um, people would bring their incoming hots up into the ceiling and they would run from the panel to ceiling boxes. And then from there, instead of having to run in between each device, for switches specifically, they would just run from the ceiling two conductors down to a switch because a switch always has two terminals. So a normal single pole switch is not a three-way switch with three terminals. You're gonna have two gold screws. We'll just pretend those are gold. So really to make this switch open and close, you've got your connecting or your disconnecting. So you just need one wire going down to one terminal and one wire going back up to the light. It's just two wires. So what we would do to wire this is you would just bring the incoming hot from up in the ceiling, you'd bring it down to one of the terminals on the switch. The other thing that they would do is they would take, uh, an, in this same piece of Romex, they would take the neutral and they would bring it back up into this box. You know, it's, it's actually gonna be run behind here, so you're gonna have two sets. You'll have two blacks, two whites, two greens hanging out at you. But running one between this box and this box, running one piece of 12-2 gives you two conductors. It gives you a black and a white. So they would just take the incoming hot on the black, feed it down, and then the switch leg would go back on the white, which this is kind of a dangerous situation because somebody opening up the switch might be like, oh, white, that's neutral. They just hooked a neutral up and I'm not gonna get shocked or something on the neutral, which you can get shocked on a neutral. Um, but you have to re-identify this. You know, a lot of people will put like a red tag on it or black tag or something to let people know that's actually code. I won't get into the whole code thing right now, but look it up. There's a lot of things about switch loops in code, where you can use them, where you shouldn't use them and how to re-identify the conductors. So we're taking our incoming hot, we're sending it down to the switch. We're bringing the other conductor going back up into this box and we're gonna wire nut it with the black here because we're sending current down. We need the current to go back up and go into the light. So on this white wire, we're going to, oops. So on this white wire, we're actually going to join it with the black. Again, remember this isn't a neutral, this is a re-identified, I'll even like put a black tag around it. So like we know up at the box and over here at the switch that this has been re-identified with black electrical tape as a current carrying conductor or a hot. So notice we still have a neutral hanging over here, but again, these wires are up in this box. So we'll have two whites, two blacks, and two greens coming out of here. So this black is actually up in this box and this white is up in this box. So you're just hooking this white that's coming back from the switch to be the thing that when you switch the, the, the light switch on, current's gonna go to that black wire. Well, you still need to get a path back to the neutral up here because you have your hot coming from your panel, you've got your neutral coming from the panel. So the only way current can flow is if you complete the circuit. So you have to make sure that this neutral right here gets run, we'll hop over back to our neutral. So it makes a loop. We've got incoming hot, let me uh, draw with yellow. We've got our incoming hot. We've got through the switch, when you actually turn the switch, when you close it, turn it on, makes it all the way up into the hot of the light through the little filament inside of the light, back through the neutral, back around through the neutral. And you have 
back at the service where everything is bonded, you have a complete circuit all the way back up to the source, up to the transformer. So that is a switch loop. A switch loop is basically just, crap, I've got a hot up in my light box and I need to just run two conductors down so I can send a hot down, send a leg back up. And that's all you would really use that for. There's a lot of door jam switches that run off of the same phenomenon. So sometimes we'll run a hot up into a closet and if they want us to put a door jam switch in, meaning if I open the door, a light switch pops open, or well, it pops closed. It opens, but it closes internally, so it turns the light on. And when then you shut the door, it depresses that button and it actually opens the circuit up and shuts the light off. So it's always like immediately when you open the door, the, the light comes on. We do this a lot in closets. We do it a lot in like pantries, um, stuff like that. In cabinets specifically, some people want to like open a cabinet and like boom, have like LED strips come on. So what we do is we run the hot to where the light is, the actual light location. And from there we run two conductors down to the switch or the door jam switch or whatever it is. So that is a switch loop. You can see it's a very different thing. It's just a different wire or a different way to wire a normal single pole switch. It has nothing to do with three ways or multiple location switching like the three ways did. So last thing, we can have something called a three-way switch loop. This is kind of crazy. A lot of people know like th three ways or they know switch loops, but they didn't realize that there's like a three-way switch loop, a way that you can make three ways do the same thing. So if you're in a situation where you're in like a room and it's got two doors on the room and you need to be able to switch from both locations, but it's a 70s house and they ran the hots up in the ceiling, you can still do the same thing where you send some conductors down to one side, send some conductors down to the other side and still make this whole thing thing kind of work. So what we would do is we would have, you don't have an incoming hot at this location and you don't have an incoming hot at this location. You don't have a switch leg at this location. You don't have a switch leg at this location. Right now we just have two boxes. So we have to send our hot from this box down here, but we also have to make sure that we have a leg going down on the other side. So what we can do is we can take two 12 threes. It's black, red, white running down to this side, there are three screws, there are three wires, black, red, white. Over here, three screws, three wires, black, red, white. So you would run, your incoming hot is different. So I'll say like in this box, you would run a, uh, well, here, I'll still do the same nomenclature that I did on the first one where like this is the light, this is just to show what we're, box we're coming into. But we'll say our incoming hot is already in here and we're running two sets of 12.3 into that. So we could take, it doesn't really matter what colors you use for anything. Um, they all need to be, the white's gonna have to be re-identified still so that nobody thinks it's a neutral. The neutral actually just stays up here and the fixture's neutral hooks up to that neutral. So the, the red, black, and white that you're running out are different and they don't hook up to neutral. But let me, uh, let me start with those. So if we're gonna run a 12.3 down, then we're gonna have a black, a red, and a white. And over here, let's say we've got a white, a red, and a black. Two sets of 12.3 going up. So we need to re-identify the white conductor per code. We gotta make sure that people don't think that that's actually a neutral. And it helps visually to understand that too. So at the switch location down here in the switch box, I'm gonna re-identify black. And then up here at this outlet box, I'm gonna re-identify as black as well. So again, this is the same thing as this. This is just like the, the schematic version of what a light is, is notated as. This is just visually for you to like understand where we're at when we're talking about this light. But I'm gonna wire over this uh, to this light. So we've got incoming power. We need to send that black, that hot, down to one of these switches. So let's just say we're gonna do it on the left one. And we'll say that we're going to use this, uh, this black to be the thing that we hook up to the re-identified white conductor. That sends our black down on the common screw, just like a normal three-way would be. Then we've got a traveler coming up, so we can hook, uh, we can hook the wire that's coming in here, that's a traveler, up to the wire that's coming in here. Just wire nut those together. So now you have a path through one switch, through another switch. 
Then we can also do the same thing with the black. We'll pull the black into this box, wire nut it with the black that's going into this box. Both of those are coming in to this box. I just don't want to draw all those damn wires because it's just going to make it look messy. So inside of this box, this is what you've got going on. We still have our neutral and our ground just left up there because they're coming in from the panel. Now on this side, we have our leg left over. So what do we do with the leg? We actually hook the, the, um, the lead that comes off of this light into the light to that re-identified white. This is now our switch leg. So this is what we hook the light up to. And then out of here, we still have a neutral lead. So where does the neutral go? Back over to this neutral. So we have, uh, let's follow the, follow the current. Say that our, um, our switches are in like this location. So we're using the black traveler. Uh, to make this whole thing happen. We have current coming through on our re-identified white conductor that is now our hot, going through the switch, going through one of our travelers all the way back through this switch over to our switch leg, which is also a re-identified unground conductor, goes into the light, through the light bulb, through to the neutral, all the way back, and then boom, we have a complete circuit all the way back out to our transformer out at the pole. Um, so we have a complete circuit. And then if you, you know, change any one of these, just like a normal three-way, if I were to flip the switch, now I no longer have a path through there. I would have to flip the other switch to use the red traveler to make all of this stuff happen too. So either way you switch, it still works the same, but it is a switch loop because your incoming hot is on the ceiling in, in the ceiling box. So you're sending down conductors to make a loop out of these switches, but it just happens to be a three-way setup, so it's a three-way switch loop. So I've only seen a couple of those uh, just like in existence. It's usually on like really old houses way out in the boondocks, out in the country here in Texas. Um, and so a lot of times too, when you pull open switches, you're, you're gonna see what look like travelers and they're hooked up in weird ways and you're just like, what's going on here? Like I'm hooking new switches up and something's not working right. And if you mess with any of the wires up in the ceiling, you could have been mistaking it, not realizing it's a switch loop up there. And now you've got current going in weird places and you don't, nothing's working right. So something to look out for. Uh, some of my guys recently actually just had a job like that where like nothing was making sense. And I'm like, I bet it's a three-way switch loop. And they're like, what the, what is a three-way switch loop? I'm like, it's a switch loop, but instead of one switch that you're sending two conductors down, you have two switches, so you're sending three conductors down to each side and sending your hot, going through travelers, sending the leg back up, it's kind of a trickier thing. But anyways, that's the difference between switch loops and three-way switches. All right, so I hope that answered your question. If you wanna watch a video on switch loops where I go a little bit more in depth, click this guy. Uh, if you'd like to watch a video I did on the different types of three-way wiring, there's a video called Three Ways Three Ways Can Be. You should check that out. It's actually really informative about everything you would wanna know about three ways. Love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next one.